Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. In this video, we are going to learn about two techniques that can be used to apply bolt pretension in Abacus. This video is related to this blog post from my blog LearnFEA. And in here, I explain the theory uh, side of these two techniques. And in this video, we are going to apply this theory in something more practical. That is, we are going to open Abacus and we are going to build a model to apply the, these two techniques. The first one uses pretension section, and uh, this is the standard. Uh, this is the standard technique in Abacus. And uh, the second technique is the one that uses the translator connector, which is my preferred one. And we are going to build a model that looks like this which is a very common type of assembly. So we are going to have the bracket, we are going to have a spacer, the bolt, and a nut. We can also have a washer here on the bolt head side. And uh, in our case, I'm not going to model the spacer, which is this inner metal here inside the bracket. Just because um, if we do it, we are going to have more contact to to model and it's going to take just more time uh, but usually we have a spacer here but in our case we're not going to have it this type of assembly is uh, used a lot in front suspension of vehicles as you can see here in this image so in the red circled areas you see that we have a bracket and we have a bolt and uh, the spacer is inside this hoop so this is upper this is the upper control arm and this one is the lower control arm. You see that for the lower control arm we also have something like this here. Okay, so this is a very common type of assembly. The second technique uses a translator connector. This one is the my preferred one. This is the one that I use in my projects. And in here we are going to to have some couplings and uh, a connector between the reference nodes. Of the couplings okay so let's see how it works um let's open up abacus cae and uh let me also create a folder here in my desk desktop which is going to be my working folder for this project so let me return to my de desktop and new folder and let's name it as um, bolt retention model. You can give any name you want to. Let me copy the path to this folder. And here in Abacus, create model database with the standard explicit model. And then go to file, set work directory, and paste that path. Okay. Now everything that we create here is going to be placed in that folder. So, as I mentioned, we are going to create a model that looks like this one. So let's just start um, drawing this bracket. I am going to do something um, not following any predetermined dimensions. I'm just going to do something that looks good. Okay? So, let's create the bracket so double click on part and then let's name it as bracket it's a 3d part deformable solid and extrusion because we are going to draw this section and then extrude it so continue and first of all we should choose uh, the set of units that we're going to use here in abacus and to do that, we can just search for Abacus units table or something like this, images. And then we have here the sets of units that can be used. I usually use the second column as I in millimeter. And then we are going to have length in millimeter, forcing Newton and stress in MPA. So this is what matters for us. So let's just start drawing that bracket. And to do that, um, let's get create lines and uh, do something like this. Draw something like this. 
it doesn't need to be perfect just um do something like this okay now um click on add constraint and uh, the first constraint i want to add is horizontal i want this line to be horizontal and you see the h here above the line this one is horizontal already and um okay that's what we need um also let's use coincident and then click on this line hold shift and click on this and you see that now they are at the same height um now let's use the equal length click on this one hold shift and click on this one and done now they have the same length and yeah that's what we need we can close this one and now let's click on add dimension and um from here to here let's define it as maybe um 60 mm i don't know and uh here we can have it as one fourth of an inch that is 6.35 mm so imagine that this is a a folded plate and here we should also have it as 6.35 okay and from here to there let's define it as maybe 60 also okay um we can adjust it later if it's needed now let's add a radius here a need a ra radius and to do that we can click on trade fillet and then define here the radius and uh, since the thickness is 6.35 the radius should be 6.35 to the inner radius okay so define it as 6.35 um hit on enter and then select this first line and then this one and there we have it now this one and this one now the outer radius should be two times the inner radius that is it should be 12.7 now define it as so click on ask and then select again create fillet define the radius to be 12.7 press enter and then select this one and this one this one and this one okay now you can see that we have some um some dimensions here painted in pink that means that it is over constrained there are some dimensions that are not needed so we can um for example we can delete this one because you see that it added this constraint of tangent so it looks like um this dimension is not needed so we can delete the 12.7 click on it and middle mouse button this one also middle mouse mouse button and also this one this one is not needed all right okay now we have everything we need and uh, probably the height is too high Maybe we need to decrease this to 50. I don't know. Let's see. Um, click on edit dimension value. Select this one. And let's decrease it to 60. Apply. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's looking. This is looking great. Uh, we can return to this sketch and change something later if it's needed. Now click on done. And now we should uh, define how much we want to extrude this section. So I guess 50 mm is good enough. So let's define it as 50. Click OK. All right. Yeah. Uh, this looks good to me. Maybe I want to have something. Go to this bracket part that was created to maximize features maximize solid extrude 
and then we have our section double click on it and uh, maybe i want to also go to edit dimension value and let's decrease here to 50 mm yes okay now click on ask click on done and then uh, he's complaining that he didn't regenerate this so let's click on ok and then go to feature and regenerate now you see that the part is updated maybe this is too long we can have it um uh, let's decrease it so here on solid solid extrude double click on it and then the depth should be 40 maybe um okay yeah that that's good that's okay now next next thing i want to do is to create a hole here where my bolt is going to pass and to do that um we can use um create cut extrude in part module you see that we have our part here selected bracket and then click on this one and then it says select a plane for the extrude cut let's select this surface and then select an edge or axis that will appear well this one will appear this edge okay now get the circle tool click right here in the middle and let's define a circle like this now um the diameter should be let's see one good diameter here that will look good um click on the add dimension tool select the circle click again and uh let's define um the radius to be equal to maybe um could be eight i think eight maybe nine nine looks better yeah i think it looks good now let's get this dimension here as to any we don't need to modify it and from the center to here um it could be the value that that is already defined and okay i think it's okay we can adjust this later click on ask and then click on john and in here we should select through all then it's going to cut through the whole the whole part click on okay and there we have it yeah maybe this hole is too large maybe i'm going to decrease it a little so to do that you see that we have this new feature cut extrude double click on it oh sorry not this one uh maximize it to see the section double click on section edit dimension this one and uh, maybe i want seven here or eight eight's better okay ask john okay feature regenerate yeah i think that's okay yeah that's good let me deactivate this perspective so click on turn perspective off yeah that's better okay also i want to create a hole here which is where this bracket is going to be fixed so let's do this quickly click on create cut select this surface and then select this edge for example create a hole here right in the center and then let's define the radius to be 6 mm 6 is good and from here to here let's keep it as 12.3 and from here to here keep it as 20 and then ask done through all okay all right now next thing i want to do is to uh, generate the mesh for this part so double so you see that bracket is maximized you see that mesh is empty double click on it and um, let's uh, divide 
this domain into elements. And in this case, since we have some holes, um, a good type of element to be used is the tetrahedral, second order tetrahedral. So firstly, let's seed this part to define the element size. So click on seed part and uh, we could use four millimeters. It's okay, apply. And you see that we have these dots generated at the edges. And this is what defines the element size. Now we can click on OK. Next thing I want to define is mesh control. So click on it. And then here I want to create tetrahedron. So select tet. And you can keep the standard options here. Click on OK. Next thing I want to define is element type. Click on assign element type. And uh, here we are going to use from element library standard 3D stress family, uh, quadratic order. So we are going to have um, the corner nodes and the mid side nodes, and these yields to a good accuracy. So this is a three C three D ten. So it has ten nodes: the corner nodes and the mid side nodes. Okay, so the the let's see here. We can keep the standard options. So the shape functions are second order of shape functions, which, which yields to good accuracy. Click on OK. And now we can click on Mesh Part and click on Yes. And there we have it. This is a good looking mesh. OK. Now we can um, go to our next part. Um, that can be the bolt. So double click on Part and then name it as bolt and this is going to be 3d deformable and here instead of extrusion i want to select revolution and then click on continue revolution because we are going to click create a sketch here that we that's going to be revoluted 360 degrees to create our solid okay so we need to get here a rectangle Click on the origin and then drag the mouse like this and then create another rectangle like this and let's get the auto trim tool click on this edge click again because we had two edges at the same place and that's what we need now click on add dimension select um, this edge let's define it as 10 mm for now. Click on add constraints horizontal, select this edge and this one too. Okay, now we have H above the line where we want the lines to be horizontal. Now I want to define here this dimension, this height. So let's remember that the bracket. Uh, the bracket width was equal to 50 mm so this bolt needs to have a little more than 50 mm so let's imagine that the the thickness of the nut will be 10 mm so it, it, it the length here needs to be 50 plus 10 that is 60 and a little more than that so it could be 65 for example click on ok Okay, if you didn't understand what I just described, you are going to understand it shortly. Now the radius of this bolt should be so the we defined that hole to be to have to have it has 8 mm radius, right? So here we can have uh, the radius equals to 7 mm. Yeah. Now let's define here this dimension as maybe four no a little more than that let's go to edit dimension value get this one into six maybe or even seven yeah seven is better uh maybe this one is yeah that's okay let's see how it will look like click on s and then click on john and here i want to revolute it 360 degrees Click on OK, and there we have it. We have our bolt. Yeah, this looks good. 
Okay, so this is how we actually um represent a bolt we don't represent the thread there is one specific type of analysis that we analyze the thread part of the bolt but in this type of analysis we are not interested in that region so we are not going to model that and also notice that here we have a sharp corner a 90 degree between this surface and this surface 90 degree angle and this is going to yield to a singularity, which means that we cannot take into, into consideration the stress in this line right here, near this line right here that is selected. Okay? So if this is your region of interest, you should uh, create a radius here to eliminate this numerical singularity, which is not the case uh, in this analysis. In this analysis, um, we are probably interested in analyzing that joint to perform a uh, so-called uh, joint integrity analysis. And uh, the purpose of, of this type of analysis is to see if that joint is slipping. Okay. And, uh, and uh, we can also analyze the stress along the length of this bolt between the thread and before we reach to the singularity okay um all right i'm not going to generate the mesh for this part yet because after we create the bolt pretension section that we are going to create shortly the mesh will will be invalidated so we are going to need to create it again so i'm i'm not going to to create it right now the last part i want to to create is the net so double click on parts now name it as net and uh, again this is a revolution type continue and let's draw a rectangle like this get added um, select um, add dimension the inner the inner radius will be 7 mm which is the radius of the bolt and the distance from here to here can be 7 mm 7 mm is too low let's get it to be equal to 9 9 for example and uh, add dimension let's define it as 10 okay ask done 360 okay mm yeah this is not looking so good let me change it a little bit go to net features solid revolve and we here we have the sketch add edit dimension and um, this one i want it to be equal to eight and uh, ask done okay feature regenerate yeah this is looking a little better Okay, so now we have, uh, for this one, we can create a mesh. So let's do it. Uh, double click on mesh. And then seed part. We can accept 4.2 mm. Apply. Okay. Assign mesh controls. Here I want to use hex elements, hexahedral elements. Uh, sweep. Okay. And uh, assign element type. Uh, 3d stress and for this one since we're going to use hexahedral elements this type of element has um, uh, a good accuracy if it's linear it, it's not worth it to use quadratic elements it has too many nodes in just one element and uh, if we use linear it's good enough it, it's going to have eight nodes that is one node per corner okay and we can use reduced integration to avoid shear uh, our glassing. And in this case, we are not going to face this issue because we are not subjecting this nut to bending. But it's always good to use reduced integration when we use uh, first order hexahedrals. Okay, so click on OK. And then we can click on mesh part and yes. And there we have it. You see that since this is a first order hexahedral element, the surfaces of the elements are are straight 
it's not curved as it would be for the second order elements which is okay for this uh, for this uh, analysis that we are performing all right we have our mesh for the nut now we can go to the next step that is let's create a material for this analysis i'm going to use um, a linear material we can use for example the astm a36 um, the only properties that we need to define is modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. Those are the properties that are going to be used to formulate the stiffness matrix of each element. So go to elastic, mechanical elastic, elasticity and elastic. And here we should define Yang's modulus or modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. For a STMA36, Yang's modulus is equal to 200,000, 1, 2, 3, MPA. Let's remember that the unit here for stress is MPA, and uh, the unit for Yang's modulus is the same unit as stress. So here we should have 2 and 5 zeros, okay? And Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3, okay? These are the only properties that we should define for a linear material. Click on OK. Now, next thing I want to do is to create a section. So double click on sections. And I'm going to just name it as solid section. And click on OK. I'll actually continue. And then for this section, which is a homogeneous solid, that means that the properties doesn't change with position. Homogeneous. That's the meaning of homogeneous. And then we have our material here that we just created. And then click on OK. And then we have the section that needs to be assigned for each part that we created. So let's do that. And to do this, we can go to module property. And then we have this tool, assign section. Select this nut and then deactivate create set and then done and then select the section that we created that we named a solid section and then click on ok and there we have it it changed the color because now we have our section defined now uh, we did it for the nut now we need to do it for the bracket so select bracket Assign section, select the bracket, middle mouse button, or actually cancel. No, do not cancel. Um, you can select solid section and then click on OK. Now go to bolt, do the same thing. Click on OK. OK, now the software knows what is the material that's going to be used for each part. And it also knows that uh, these solids are homogeneous. And uh, this is good because this is, uh, these are informations needed to evaluate the stiffness matrix of each element. Okay, ne next thing we can do is to create our assembly. And to do that, maximize assembly group here and double click on instances. And then here in this instance, I want to add this part this one or actually hold the shift key click the first one and then click the last one and then we have we are going to have everything here added here and then click on ok and there we have it now we just need to uh, position the parts and to do that we can use this tool create constraint and uh, the first constraint I want to create is this one. So click on this button and uh, with the left mouse button and hold until you see these options. And then we have create constraint coaxial. Select this one and then select these, uh, these surface and this one. And you see that this arrow is downward and this arrow is to the left. Um, I should flip it. And then we have um, we have it like this. And when we click it on OK, you see that it is positioned like this. 
Okay, you can do one test and see what happens when uh, we had the arrows not flipped. And you're going to see that uh, the bolt is going to be positioned the other way, which is not what I want. Okay, and now let's create a constraint of um, this one face to face. And I want, let's see, this face with this face. And you see that the arrows are uh, on opposite sides. I want to flip it. Now we have it on the same side, which is what I want. Click on OK. And then here we can assign a clearance, that is a distance between these two surfaces. And I want this distance to be equal to zero. So click on OK. And there we have it. If the arrows that if those arrows was uh, on opposite sides, this would yield to an error. Okay, so the arrows the arrows should be on the same side. Now I want to position the nut right there. So go to go axial. Select this surface and this one, and um, I click on OK. Now. Select face-to-face, uh, -face, select this surface and this one. You see that the arrows are not in the same, uh, oriented to the same side, so flip it. And there we have it. That's what we need. Click on OK and OK, zero clearance. OK, so this is what I want. Now, um, next thing I want to do is to create um, the bolt pretension. And probably we're going to, the, the parts, the bolt is going to kind of, it, it's going to lose the position. We're going to, to define its position again. You're going to see what's going to happen. So let's do this. Um, actually, let's firstly, Create a coupling here on this upper hole because this is where we are going to fix this part. And to do that, we can go to module it interaction. And um, here, firstly, we need to create a reference point. And to do that, we can use this tool, RP. And then you see that we have some references here to, to use. And the reference I want to use is this point right here so click on it and there we have it a rp1 created now i can click on um create constraints coupling and then i can give it a name such as fixed node coupling and then click on continue and then uh, it says select the constraint control points Select this point, done, and select the constraint region type. We can select it by surface, and then select this surface right here, done. This coupling could be a kinematic coupling with all degrees of freedom constraints, and then we can click on OK, and there we have it. So we have this reference point attached to every node that is part of this surface. In that way, we can fix this reference point, and we are going to be fixing all these nodes that are from the surface. Okay, and uh, this is important to prevent rigid body motion of this whole assembly. So basically, what we are doing here is, I uh, imagine that this hole here, we have it attached to some other part, but we are not interested in analyzing it, so we are going to simplify this region and instead of representing the other part, we are just going to fix the um, the displacements here. Um, and that's just because it's not a region of interest. Okay, so we cannot take into consideration the stress contour plot near this region. But we, if we were interested in analyzing this region, we would have to represent the other part attached to it and the bolt and everything. Okay, now let's go to steps. You see that we have one step created, 
the initial step. In this step, we can only uh, apply boundary conditions to prevent rigid body motion. So you see that we have here BCs. Double click on it. And uh, I can name this boundary condition as fixed node. And uh, the type could be this one because we are going to encastre this node. Continue. And you, you can select this option. That is, we are going to uh, set all degrees of freedom equal to zero. The translational and rotational degrees of freedom. Click on OK. And there we have it. OK. Now, we need to create one more step that is going to be used to apply uh, the load, the bolt pretension load. And to do that, double click on steps. And we can give um, a name for the step as load step. And this is going to be inserted after the initial step. And this should be a static general. Okay, so the equations that are going to be used for this model are the equilibrium equations, that is for a static structural analysis. And this is important for the software to define properly the, the, the stiffness matrix of each element. Continue. And then here I should have um, large displacement activated. And this is one type of nonlinearity that's going to happen in this module because this bracket is going to displace considerably when we have the bolt pretension. And uh, here in increment incrementation, I want the initial increment step to be equal to 0 0.1, that is 10% of uh, the bolt pretension application, minimum to be E minus 9, and maximum to be 0 0.12. I don't want this software to increase the increment um, because I want uh, some. Uh, I want at least 10 points to be generated, 10 points of results to be generated. Okay, and then here we don't need to do anything. Click on OK. And now we have our step created. And the uh, next thing I want to do is to apply the bolt pretension. So double click on load here. And I'm going to name it as bolt pretension. And then here I should select uh, bolt load. Just one minute, guys. Okay, bolt load. Click on continue. And then it says select method. And um, I want to select this method, bolt shank surface. Okay, so this is the met method usually used uh, for this type of bolt. Select bolt shank surface. And then it says select bolt shank face for partition. I want to select this surface. And it says select region, uh, be, uh, selected regions belongs to dependent instance. Press yes to create partition at part level and continue or no to cancel. So if I press yes, it's going to create a partition on the bolt part. And uh, if you don't know what is a partition, you're going to learn now. So click, click on yes. And here, um, partition bolt shank face, cut position in percentage. So imagine that we have a length here of, for this bolt that is 65 mm. And if I let here 50%, it's going to create a partition right in the middle of this length. That is 65 divided by 2. We can let it as 50 and click on done. You see that it created a partition. That is, it divided the bolt in two parts uh, right here, right in the middle of this length. Now here we can define the magnitude of this bolt pretension. And uh, we can define it as 50,000 Newton, for example. Okay, so let's remember that the set of units that we are using are these ones. And uh, force should be in Newton. So here we have 50,000 Newton. 
click on OK. And there we have it. We have our section created and the bolt pretension applied. Okay, so it's pretty easy to apply this bolt pretension. If we return to the bolt part, we have that there is no mesh created. So double click on it. And you see that we have now two pieces that are connected by this section. Okay, so even though we have two parts, uh, the software understands that this is the same part. That is, it is continuous throughout, uh, actually through this section. Okay. Now, um, you see that one part is yellow and the other part is orange. It means that this yellow part lost that section we have defined, uh, assembled actually. So we should do it again. So click here on property and uh, assign section, select everything here, middle mouse button and select the solid section. Click on OK. Now let's return to parts and uh, double click on mesh. Oh, okay. Uh, it's it's uh, in two different colors anyways. Let's um, go to assign mesh controls select this whole bolt and here we can use hexahedral elements because this is a very simple part and uh, in this case we can use hexahedron so let's click on ok oh and you see that uh, the colors are different because it's showing that um you see that oh it's not showing here um what yellow means Okay, I'm going to explain shortly why this is yellow. Now let's go to seed part, accept for MM, apply, okay, and uh, assign element type, select everything, middle mouse button, and here I want to use a standard linear hexahedral element with reduced integration activated. Click on OK, and let's, let's try to mesh it. Click on mesh, click on OK. When you click on mesh part, he explains that the regions highlighted in magenta cannot be meshed automatically using the assigned element shapes. Okay, so here we have um, um, a different, a, a, a variation in cross-section area and the software is not able to generate this type of element there. So what we can do here is to create a partition that is we can create a cut here between between the bolt um, section and the bolt head to try to solve this so let's do it um, to create a partition we can use this tool create partition or actually let's use this one partition cell and then uh, select the cells to partition. I want to select this one, middle mouse button. And then it's going to, it's saying that it's going to lose the mesh. Click on OK. And then we can define it uh, using point and normal. And then select this point and this edge right here. And create partition. What happened here is that it uh, it cut the bolt here in a way that we have this as one body and the bolt head as another body. Now we can try again to seed, apply, okay, and mesh. Yes. Now it worked. You see that the software was able to generate the mesh now. Okay, um, now let's return to assembly. And apparently the software didn't lose the assembly constraints. So that's okay, that's good. Now before I forget, let me explain you one very important thing. Let's go to load module and um, click on load manager. And you see that we have here our bolt pretension load. 
double click on it and uh, now you see that we have a representation of this load so uh, there is some arrows here on the bolt retention section which is this red circle okay so basically when we create this bolt retention section so this is the bolt retention section it's just a section uh, on the bolt that is normal to the axial direction uh, the software also generates the pretension node this is automatic in abacus if we were using a preprocessor software such as ensa or hypermesh we would have to generate this node manually but in this case uh, the software generates it uh, automatically and also the software creates a coordinate system local coordinate system at this node with the x axis along the axial direction of the bolt okay and uh, when we have a load defined such as 50000 newtons which is our case uh, this load is applied to this pretension node and just one important observation the pretension node cannot be related to any element it should be isolated and uh, the position of this node is not important and uh, we can't actually even see this node here in abacus we could see it if we we were using ensa or hypermesh and uh, this load is applied to this node in the axial direction of the bolt that is it is applied at the x-axis of the local coordinate system and this is uh, related to this bolt pretension section this load and this node too and what happens here is that in this section we have uh, the nodes moved from one side of this section in a way that it's going to decrease the bolt length and uh, as a consequence uh, we are going to have a bolt load along the axial direction okay so basically this is how it works i have here in this blog post a more detailed explanation okay so here i explain uh with much more detail so we have the bolt pretension uh, uh, section we have the underlying elements that are used to generate this section we have the normal direction the pretension node so you should read it um, carefully okay so let's close it and now that we understood how the bolt pretension work um, and we have the bolt uh, the load applied here let me see if we need to do anything well i guess we have everything set let me see one thing here we have the the mesh for the bolt and it's looking great um i guess now we can go to job module and then create job and let's name it as bolt retention section because after these we are going to apply the second technique which uses the translator connector and not the pretension section okay so continue and accept the standard options here and then okay and then job manager we have our job created and click on submit and uh, let's click on monitor maximize this window and here we can monitor the solution so since this is a non-linear analysis we are going to have uh, each step split splitted in sub steps and we forced the software to split it in at least 10 pieces oh there is one very important thing that i forgot i got here five cutbacks in a row and the, the reason for that is because we didn't define any contact so we should define the contact between the parts so let's do that to do this um let's go back to assembly module and 
here in assembly group we have surfaces uh, we have just one surface which is the bolt grid sanction section but i need to create uh, the other surfaces that are going to be used um, to model our contacts between the parts to create a new surface let's firstly um, select the bracket right click on it and hide instance Control and out and left mouse button you can rotate the view and then double click on surfaces and then i'm going to name it as bolt head bolt head and continue select the surface and done now we have the bolt head surface created double click on surfaces again and let's name it as nut click on oh yeah could be nut click on continue hold ctrl and alt and use the left mouse button to rotate select the surface and done now uh, double click on surfaces again and then uh, name it as bolt to nut tie because we are going to have a tie contact between bolt and nut continue and we should select this surface done and uh, now let's click on the nut right click hide instance rotate create another another surface and name it as nut to bolt tie continue and select this surface done and um, maximize instances here and select these two actually just select the bracket and say show now double click on surfaces again and uh, bracket to bolt head should be the name continue select the surface done rotate the view create another surface and this one is bracket to nut continue select this surface and middle mouse button now we have the surfaces that we, that are going to be used to formulate our contacts uh, click on bolt right click and show um now go to interaction uh, module and here we have a uh, um create interaction and i want to create a surface to surface contact a standard we can give it a name as bolt head bracket continue and select the master surface here i want to select between the surfaces i created and to do that let me just hide my camera you see that we have this button right here create on it oh, click on it surfaces and here we have the surfaces that we created before and then we have uh, let's get firstly the bolt head as the master and then continue and then click on surface again and uh, then select bracket to bolt head in this case it's not important who is the master and who is the slave um, for this contact because um we are uh here we have a contact between two solid parts and anyways this video is not about contact so let's not um let's not talk too much about it so select bracket to bolt head continue and then uh here in edit interaction i want um find it a sliding formulation i could even select a small sliding because I guess we are not going to have too much sliding here, but uh, let's set it as finite sliding, surface to surface. And you see that contact interaction property, there is nothing here. We should create one, create interaction property. And I'm going to name it as 0 0.2 friction because I'm going to set the coefficient of friction equals 0 0.2. And then continue. Okay, 
probably I cannot have underline. So let's delete it. Continue. Invalid name. Oh, I cannot start with numbers. So let's get friction underline 0 0.2. Yep. Now go to mechanical tangential behavior and select penalty and the friction coefficient equals 0 0.2, which is a standard friction coefficient between two steel parts that doesn't have any type of surface um, treatment. Click on OK, and there we have it. Now, we don't need to do anything else here. We can accept what we have. Now, there we have one contact defined. Let's define now between net and bracket. So go to create interaction again. And this is going to be bracket to bracket net. You can name it as. Oh, and there is one thing. It should be defined for the initial step. I probably need to, to, to fix this for the other contact. So standard. So this one is between bracket to net surface and this one nut continue and friction 0 0.2 okay let's go to interaction manager and you see that this one was created on the load step i want it to be created in the initial step so let's edit and actually here um move left yeah so click on move left and then we have uh, this created in the initial step and propagate it to the load step double click on it and you see that here now step is initial okay that's good now i just want to create the tie contact between net and bolt let's do that to do it we should go to create constraint and this is bolt to net and I want to create a tie contact. So we are just going to fix, actually tie one part to the, to the other. Continue, select surface, and I want a net to bolt tie, continue, and bolt to net tie, continue. We can accept um, the standard configuration and then click on OK. Okay, now the net cannot move with respect to the bolt, which is what we want. We are representing the effect of the thread here, but in a simplified manner. And we can do it when we are not interested in analyzing this region right here. <clears throat> okay, I guess we can now go to job, job manager and submit it again let's see if it's going to run click on monitor let's wait it's running okay um in this video, we are going to show. I'm I'm going to show just this first technique, and uh, in the next video, I'm going to show the the second technique that uses the translator connector. Okay, because this video is too long, and uh, maybe you are not interested in this technique or on the other technique. So I'm going to split it in two videos. So you see that it has some difficulties to run in the beginning but then uh, the time increment uh, decreased and then it started increasing until we had the maximum time increment possible that is 10 percent and then it finished so we have it completed go to results control and alt and left mouse button to rotate and let's see if it worked um you can click on plot deformed shape 
and you see that uh, we are having the bolt retention on the bolt, which is great. And you see that there is something happening here on the bolt retention section, which is where we have the uh, bolt length decreased. Um, we can animate it. So firstly, let's click here on turn perspective off and uh, rotate it like this and click on the Z. Let me try to click on the Z axis here. No, let me rotate it like this and I should be able to click on Z. So I'm going to see normal to Z. That is, I'm going to see on the X, Y plane. And uh, let's animate it. Um, animate time history. Yes, yeah, so you see that the bolt length is being decreased in this section by moving the nodes from one side of this section. And when the bolt length decreases, we have some reactions here on these two contacts. Um, that's, that's our bolt pretension. Okay, this is uh, explained with much more details here. Okay, so read it. And we can analyze whatever you, we, we'd like to. We can have here uh, Vomis' stress. We can analyze uh, anything we need. You see that the maximum Vomis' stress is, is here, but here we have a kinematic coupling, so this region is not represented well, so we cannot take it into consideration. Um, okay, so the purpose of this, this video is not to analyze, to post-process these. I, I just wanted to show how to set up the bolt retention. Okay, so this is how we do it. And um, now the next step is to show you how to do the same thing, but using the translator connector, which is my preferred way, and I think it's um, it's a more accurate way to do it, even though this is not the standard way to do it here in Abacus. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to do that.